Today, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at camera based presets inside of Alma Photo Raw and how to apply them. So first, why would you even want to apply a camera based preset? Well, there's a few different reasons. The first one is speed of editing. It goes really fast when you have the preset that you want imported on the base camera uh, before you get ready to do your editing. Now, inside of the preference window, you will be able to select the camera by either the model or the model and the serial number. This is extremely important to understand because uh, if you are a person who has two of the exact same models, so maybe you have two EOS R's or R6's, whatever it may be, selecting it by the serial number is how I recommend you work and really everyone who's going to use this tool. Because if you're getting photos from someone else and you select it by just the model, you'll end up putting these presets on all of the images as they're imported. That may not be what you want. So my recommendation is you go with serial number first and only whenever you're working inside of this particular workflow. Now, these are different from what you're used to seeing with the import presets. OK, the difference is the import presets don't change the default values of the image. It just applies a preset with the camera based preset option. It's going to change the default settings of your image and essentially render the raw file the way that you would want it to be rendered. So that is the difference between the two. Now, you're not going to be able to click the reset all button whenever you use the camera based preset, but these are non destructive edits. The only way that you can edit is by adding another preset onto the image using the preset pane or opening it inside of the edit module and then adjusting whatever segment of the preset or uh, the settings like you would normally edit a photo. And the last thing that I want to point out, if you have photos in your library that already have edits on them, when you apply the camera base preset, even if it does match the serial number and that model number, if they're already edited, the on one will not change that file. So let's jump into the computer to learn how to add camera based presets. All right, so here we are inside of Alma Photo Raw. And the easiest way to get there if you're on a Mac is to hit command and comma. It's going to bring up your preferences dialog box. Now, if you are not familiar with the keyboard shortcuts, that's OK. All you have to do to get to the preferences box is inside of or on a Mac. You're going to hover over on one. Click that and click preferences. And if you're on a PC, I believe it's under edit and then down at the bottom, you'll click preferences. Once you get this dialog box, you'll click on files and down at the very bottom of the files module or files tab is where we're actually going to work today. OK, so uh, in the default processing underneath all of these items here, we have all of the cameras that on one has identified for the photos in my library. Now, I want to make note that the serial number will only be captured if it is captured in the metadata. So like obviously serial numbers for iPhones, it's not in there. So that's why I don't have it here. All right. So keep that in mind as you go through and you're making your uh, selections. Sometimes you will have to go with just the camera model. However, most DSLRs are going to have the serial number associated with it. All right. And that's the one that I recommend you work off of. Once you have found the camera model that you want to apply this to, you're going to come over to the preset column. And when you click in here, you have all of the presets that you've made. Now, it, it is a good point to, or this is a good time to point out that you have to already have the preset built, all right? It's not gonna work if you don't have the preset built. Now, I'm going to turn all of these to black and white. So I'm gonna go with black and white films, and I'm just gonna click on this one, just at random. Now, 
that's the preset that I want to apply. My next option is going to be which files from this serial numbered camera do I want to apply this preset to? Well, I have raw, I have JPEG, and I have both. Obviously, I'm not going to insult anyone's intelligence. You select one, either raw or JPEG. It's only going to apply to raw or JPEG images shot by that camera. If you select both, it's going to apply to both. Uh, there could be reasons that you only want raw if you're specifically working in a color space and you have a calibrated uh, camera profile for that particular camera, then shooting in raw or adding it only to the raw makes sense. Now, once you're done making your adjustments, you can click on OK. On one is going to think for a little while. And right now what it's doing is going out through my library, finding all of the Nikon D7200 files with the particular serial number of that, that I selected. And it's adding this preset of the Ilford SFX 200, whatever that is, never heard of this before, but it's a preset that came with on one. I'm adding it. And it's going to apply it to my raw photos and my JPEG photos. Now, depending on how many photos you have, this process right here can take a little while. So my recommendation is you figure out how many photos you have and then choose a time of day that this will not be a hindrance to you and your workflow. Uh, because if you're doing it for your entire library or the primary camera in your library, it's going to take some time. So we'll come back when this is all done. So on one finished up what it was doing. And now I'm adding in the search criteria here in the advanced search. You can see I have added uh, search all photos and then I have a rule in here for the camera model contain 7200 and then cloud sync is and then publish locally because I have issues with seeing all of those things but moral of the story I now have inside of the raw file the preset applied and it changes my default settings so if I were to click reset all, as mentioned before, I can hit OK. And it's not going to do anything to the photo because remember, the default settings inside of this particular file have now been adjusted to whatever the preset was that I selected. So when you're doing this, be careful to choose the right preset that you want. Uh, if you don't want to change your default settings. So now if I wanted to actually make edits to this, let's say I don't want this photo to be black and white. I can click on edit. So once the edit module opens up, I have access to make my adjustments here. And if I don't want this to be black and white anymore, I can come over to the effects tab, click on black and white. And now I have a photo that is no longer black and white. I actually kind of like it black and white, but this is just to show how it's still non-destructive. So if I wanted to, I can just click uh, black and white there, hit done. And it will take me back to my develop module. And now this file is no longer a black and white image with the preset that I used for the camera base preset. Same thing applies if I wanted to change this one and we'll just choose a completely random preset. We'll go with this one. So now that I'm selecting this preset for that image, it's going to adjust this photo to show up as that preset now. And again, these are all non-destructive. Hopefully that was helpful. If it was smash the like button. Click the video on the left if you want to see more about presets and click the video on the right if you want to see a video that YouTube thinks is right for you. And click the button in the middle to subscribe. Until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.